So in one word, and only one word, Josh, what is your professional style? Urgent. I'm here with Josh Sumner, the founder of the Cordoma uh, Foundation. Um, for people who don't know, what is Cordoma? Cordoma is a rare type of bone cancer that occurs in the head and along the spine. And you uh, were personally diagnosed with this? I was. Uh, about six years ago when I was an undergrad at Duke, I found out that I had a tumor right in the very center of my head. And uh, it turns out after surgery that it was, it was this rare disease that I'd never heard of called Cordoma. And, and what, were your, uh, what were your chances given to you at that, that, that point? So what I was told is that Cordoma has an average survival of about seven years, that patients who are diagnosed with it have a cure rate of about 30%. And frankly, you know, being 18 years old and having a lot to look forward to, I didn't want to accept those statistics. So you dropped out of school? I did, yeah. Well, first, I, it turns out that the only lab in the country that had a federal grant to study Cordoma happened to be at Duke, where I was at the time. <laughs> well, how lucky is that? Uh, you couldn't get, I mean, it was total serendipity. I mean, unlucky, but lucky, I suppose. That's yes. exactly right. Yeah. Uh, certainly unlikely. Um, and uh, I, so I was studying engineering at the time, didn't know anything about cancer research, uh, but I ended up joining that lab and really taking a, an interest in the work, uh, making some, some good progress. What we found was that our hands were tied in many ways. We didn't have enough funding. We didn't have the materials that we needed to study, tissue, cell lines, animal models, like the real, uh, the, 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 the subjects of our research. Um, and so I realized that in order to solve those problems and bring more researchers into the field, that we would have to start an organization to, to, to lead that process. And you've raised a, a fair amount of money. Uh, about $2.7 million thus far. And how have you gone about doing that? It's been very grassroots. Uh, you know, there are Cordoma patients all over the country who are doing golf events and bike rides and things like that. Um, our average donation size is about $350. But uh, you know, we've been very fortunate in that we've built a strong board. Uh, we have a lot of very dedicated supporters. And so increasingly, we're, uh, you know, people are making larger and larger gifts. Right. And how, ra how rare is the cancer? Uh, it's exceedingly rare. The, it, the incidence is about one in a million. One in a million. So there are like 400 people in the US who have it. Uh, uh, each year, there's about 300 people that get diagnosed. Oh. And at any given time, there's about 2,500 people that have it. Right. OK. Have you met many of them? A lot of them, yeah. Right. Uh, so we're in touch with about 700 Cordoma patients and another 1,000 or so family members. Uh, we put on uh, international Cordoma community conferences, so patients from all over the world uh, come, you know, get to meet one another. Oftentimes, it's the first time that they've met anyone else that has the disease. And that's, you know, that's been actually one of the best parts of this whole journey is just getting to connect with other people who you know, are, are walking you know, in, in, in your shoes, so to speak. And you've used that money to fund uh, research at, I believe you said, 11 different labs. That's right. We funded research in 11 different labs. Uh, we've set up a biobank to collect cordoma tumor tissue from across the country. Uh, we've developed new cell lines and animal models, which are really critical for all aspects of research. And in fact, we've set up a, a cell line repository uh, that has distributed cell lines to 52 different labs, uh, including four different pharmaceutical companies. And in doing so, we've leveraged millions of dollars worth of research and focused that on on Cordoma. Are other, are there other uh, sufferers of rare cancer, are other people doing similar things or, or, or not really? Um, it really varies. I mean, there, there are some, some organizations that are doing similar things. And you know, in many ways, we are standing on the shoulders of giants of organizations that are farther along than we are. But there Such are, as who? Um, you know, I would point to the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation as a great example. But you know, their disease is, is 40 times more common than Cordoma. Um, and while the challenges that they face are similar, there are also some differences. Um, there's other, I would say, organizations that, uh, that are, are focused on diseases that are of similar rarity. Um, one's called the Adenoid Cystic Carcinoma Research Foundation. Um, and we're really, I, I would say, blazing parallel paths, doing many of the similar things, learning from one another. But the reality is there's hundreds of rare cancers and there's a small number of organizations that are really focused on proactively driving forward science in those diseases. And I think there's an opportunity because many of these cancers face the same challenges for us to work together to solve the problems, uh, you know, solve them once and not reinvent the wheel for, uh, for each cancer over and over again. Josh, we just have a minute left. So um, if you were to give some advice to somebody who was young, who's 18, 19, 20 years old, that is diagnosed with a, a potentially deadly disease, uh, that's gotta be kind of a, I would imagine that's a very scary, it's a very sort of lonely experience. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? Um, I would say that you have a lot of power. Uh, there's 
a lot of problems that aren't going to get solved on their own, that, that scientists aren't going to be able to solve on their own, that drug companies aren't going to be able to solve on their own. And as a patient or as a patient organization, you know, our sole focus is driving forward research to find a cure. And you know, I think there's an important role for patients to play, whether it be by starting an organization or supporting an organization that is you know, really being proactive about driving uh, forward research in, in a particular disease. So you know, I would say to anyone who's diagnosed with any sort of rare disease, get involved with a patient advocacy organization um, and be smart about the way you're, you're focusing uh, the research dollars, not just uh, offering uh, money for, you know, for any research project, but come up with a research plan uh, and, and be proactive and, and strategic about driving that plan forward.